Hey guys, it's Michael, and welcome back to Let's Try Hardware Engineering. So, um, <clears throat> I had a great deal of uh, fun doing the last uh, the last episode. I um, did just a little bit of thinking about this uh, Truth Tables one with our bus driver door thing. And I realized what I did wrong, so um, I'm going to load it up, and I kind of just messed with this today and realized, uh, let's see, does it have my circuit in here? Well, it's actually all borked, so we'll just delete it. So if you recall, uh, we have a number of signals here. We have, let's put our grid up here. We have a driver wants to open the door uh, input, and we have a passenger wants to open the door input. We have a safety device wants to open the door input. And we have a door blocked input, which uh, is a one when the door is actually blocked. And therefore, uh, if the door is blocked, the driver and the passenger should not be able to open it, but the safety device should be able to open it. Now, my confusion was here. It's saying uh, the, the situations, the door may be opened. If it's not blocked and the bus driver wants it, if it's not blocked and the passenger wants it, and if there's an emergency situation, then either passenger or a safety device requested opening. So the part that confused me here was more in their wording, I guess, and maybe this is why the truth table is important, uh, is more in their wording here because I assumed that that meant no matter whether the door is blocked or not. Um, and it does seem that it's supposed to open if the safety device wants to open it if it's blocked, but not if the passenger wants to open it and it's blocked. Um, I couldn't find a situation in the truth table where the door could be blocked and the passenger could also open it. Here's the passenger opening. Um, so if he wants to open it and there's no blockage, it'll open. If he wants to open it and the door is blocked, no. If he wants to open it, the safety device wants to open it and the door is blocked, then yes. If he wants to open it and the driver wants to open it, then yes. But there's no situation, no scenario by which the passenger wants to open the door and it is blocked and we also open it. So anyway, um, let's try to build this circuit here. I think we can do it now. Okay, we've got that. This is the uh, output for the door opening and this is the output to let the driver know about opening. If either the passenger opens it or the uh, safety device opens it, then we want to let the, the driver know. Okay, so what we did last time was we had a couple of AND gates here and then we inverted with a NOT gate the input from the door blocked, thus making it a one if it's not blocked and a zero if it is. So by that, if the driver wants it, it's gonna be a one. And if the door is not blocked, it's gonna be a one and therefore we'll let the signal pass through and open the door. Same thing with the passenger over here. If the passenger wants to open it and the door is not blocked, these will both be one. This AND gate will be one and then we'll pass through and we use an OR gate to get us up to here. So this piece here is all good. Now, if the, um, I'm gonna move this door open up here. So now the override is that if the door safety device wants to open the door, it should just happen. So we're gonna use another OR gate and say, if either the driver or the passenger wanna open the door and it's not blocked, then yeah. And if the door safety device wants to open it, then yeah. So we'll go through an OR gate for that and finally get to our output. And then we have to deal with notifying the driver. But we can wire this up now, I think, just like this. Okay, that didn't work. There we go. And now this one becomes a little stretchy and weird, but we'll do it like that. All right. So now what we need to do is have this guy go active if the passenger opens the door and if this thing opens the door. So the easiest way to take those two inputs, I think, is to take an OR gate. And we'll stick that there. And 
this one is easy so we can just uh, get our wiring tool here and connect that up right to there now we need to do it if the passenger opens the door well the passenger can't open the door if the door is blocked right so if we take it from here that's not going to be right because the passenger could request the door to be open but the door could be blocked so therefore the door wouldn't have opened we need to take the output of this and drag it over to this guy now I think this will work uh, let's go ahead and, and run it and see I don't want to spend too much time on this one since we've already done it so driver wanted to open the door the door opened he wasn't notified test 2 out of 11 <laughs> the passenger wanted to open the door it wasn't blocked the door opened and he was notified okay that worked fine uh, safety open wanted to open the door the, the door opened and the driver was notified okay we got that you can kind of follow these logic paths now we have the driver wanting to open the door and the door being blocked and it's not being opened okay that's good I assume passenger and door blocked yeah passenger wanted to open the door the door was blocked and we don't get it open um, the safety open wanted to open the device and the door was blocked but the door opened and we let the driver know about it and that's because we bypassed the door blocking mechanism here so that's fine test 7 driver wanted to open the door safety wanted to open the door and the door was blocked we opened it and informed the driver so the driver didn't really have any influence in this situation it was really the safety device that opened it same situation with the passenger he really had no influence right no he didn't okay driver wanted to open it passenger wanted to open it it was opened and the um, and the driver was notified because we both wanted to open it so that went over here and got us the driver notification so that worked now we have the driver wanting to open it and the safety wanting to open it so we open it and we also notify the driver because the safety wanted to open it too and then uh, our final test door is blocked and the outputs are zero so now we've unlocked what is this an exclusive or or something they're not telling us what these are and we can continue with the addition problem now this I haven't looked at so I might have to pause and go read this because I suspect we're gonna go to wall of text here all right so what do we got here a NOR gate and an X NOR gate exclusive NOR okay I'd have to look at the truth table for that and they're showing us here a picture of an adder which takes uh, a couple of binary numbers and adds them together with a carry so signals are cool but when it comes to computation what does a signal tell us the meaning of a signal is unknown until we see its usage yet we want to compute and because of that we know we will be dealing with numbers if we could specify an interpretation of signals that would be aligned with how numbers work numbers could be used in our circuit and we would be one step forward before giving you a complete introduction into numbers and digital circuits these two laws should suffice let high true one state where wire uh, state of a wire be interpreted as number one okay and low is zero remember kindergarten and um, remember how we perform addition of two numbers when we perform addition we do arithmetic arithmetic is as Richard Feynman said nothing more than a vast array of tricks proven to be true and making it possible to count really fast okay um, there are tricks to addition and subtraction of numbers but some of those tricks only keep true in decimal it's time to expand your uh, your horizons in addition of addition in binary takes less effort than the decimal system it's also convenient by the means of containing just two symbols for each digit zero and one since we have just a while ago to find how signals can be turned into numbers uh, it's time to put that into practice we should now analyze how addition works let us lay down three rules in addition for addition and binary systems zero plus zero is zero um, one plus zero is one and zero plus one is one we know this is true because we've been told so but when we try to add one to one we face a problem uh, should we add a new system should we represent blah 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 
So 1 plus 1 equals 0, carrying the 1 is the summation here. Addition can be chained on both results and carry to work with large numbers. Okay, that makes sense. A half adder, a component that performs addition of two binary numbers without respect to previous carries, is called a half adder. From the first four rules mentioned on the previous page, we're able to construct a complete truth table describing its behavior. Okay, um, yeah, fine, we'll take that. All right, so we're going to design a single full adder. A full adder adds binary numbers and accounts for values carried in as well as out. A one-bit full adder adds three one-bit numbers, often written as A, B, and C, N. A and B are the operands, and C, N is a bit carried in from the previous less significant stage. The circuit produces a two-bit output, output carry, and sum, typically represented by the signals C out and sum, or S, where result equals two times C minus, or sorry, two times C out plus S divided by s? I can't really see. I think it's a plus. a, the first number into the device, the augend, 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 I don't know how you say that. b, the second number to be added, the addend. Outputs are the sum. So these are our inputs and our outputs. Carry is a number with higher significance to be moved in further into the computation. And here's our truth table. Okay, well, fine. Let's get our inputs here. Here's a, grid. Boy, you can see these are going to be like one an episode, right? Uh, and here's our output, which is the sum. I just can't seem to put those on the cross sections. And then the output carry, which is our carry thing there. Okay, truth table. If A and B are zero, then the sum and carry are zero. If A is 0 and B is 1, then the sum will be 1 and the carry will be 0. If A is 1, B is 0, then the sum will be 1 and the carry will be 0. And if A and B are both 1, then the sum will be 0 and the carry will be 1. Okay. So what does that sound like to us? Um, well, these first things here sound like ors. Um, they're, they're the middle two items on the truth table sound like ors. If either one of these is a one, then we'll pass the one through to sum. So that sounds like an or. But this sounds like a nand, but we, we got a special thingy here. So they're not giving us much in the way of clues for this, are they? Uh, let's just put some things on the table and see what happens, I guess. Well, so I already said this seems like or. If we hook this up like this, I believe that we would pass at least these middle two rules and maybe this first rule. Let's just try it and see what happens. It may not work at all. It's going to tell us that we don't have an output for the carry. Yeah, it's going to tell us we don't have anything going on with the carry there. So, um, hmm. I tell you why. You know, you know what? This fourth item on the truth table, A and B being one and carry being one, sounds like an AND gate with an output to the carry, right? So, what if we, what if we did that? What if we took our wiring tool here? And I'm going to go around. I don't know if you can not connect. I guess you can probably not connect, but I'm going to take it around just for clarity visually. So if we pull off of there and put that into the carry, now what do you say? It's not going to like it, I don't think. No, that worked. It worked for inputs of zero. And actually, it should work for all of them. Let's try. Next step. Okay, 0 and 1 gives us a 1 on the sum and a 0 on the carry. And the other should, the next one should be true as well. That worked. Okay, 1 and 0 gave us a 1 here and a nothing over here because we don't have both. And the next one? Okay, we didn't get the proper output here. 
So we should have gotten a zero here instead of... Uh, all right. So how do we fix that? First of all, I'll tell you, I believe that it, I believe that a um, that a half adder uses two AND gates, <laughs> but I'm not real sure. Um, so let's let's delete this and see if we can figure this out a different way. Okay, just going to delete all of these things now, and let's try an AND. So if we took an AND gate here. No, it's not letting us have another AND gate. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess that answers my question about that. We can't have an AND gate. Could the OR come here? So if both of these are 1 into this AND gate, Then, um, then we'd want to make the sum a zero. I'm just moving these things around pointlessly at this point. We want to have the sum be a zero and this be a one. How would we make that happen? Let me think. You know, at one point I could have made this circuit uh, from scratch, but let me uh, let me just pause for a second, think about it, and I'll come back and and with a proposed solution. So give me a sec. Okay, guys, I'm back. This is an ugly, ugly, ugly circuit. But here's the here's the story. Here's the test we're failing. Right when both of these are ones. So when both of these are ones, we make this AND gate output a one, and it goes to the carry. Uh, when both of them are ones, they're still though affecting this OR gate and saying that yes, we want you to go ahead and be a um, we want you to go ahead and be a one as well, but we don't want it to be a one. What if we outputted since both of these are ones, right? What if we outputted this through an AND? and then inverted it. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Um, hmm. Well, interesting. Uh, um, what if we made... There is no way by which we can make this an AND and still get something up here. Um, Unless we did, we need zero, one, and zero, one, one, and zero. Hmm. Yeah. I can't think of how to trigger this. Let me uh, let me think a little bit more. Okay, I'm back once again. A uh, clever idea is to actually look in the uh, look at these descriptions up here. So um, here's our here's our condition. We're satisfying this final line on the truth table. In other words, if both of our inputs are one, then carry is going to be one. And right now, sum isn't really defined, but we want it to be zero. So looking at these guys, um, the one that really fulfills the needs here is the output of the, uh, is the XOR gate. The output of this gate is 1 if inputs are the exact opposite of each other. The one possible combination is 0 and 1 order independent. Uh, it can be achieved using combination of more fundamental gates. So if we look at this, the only time we want sum to be 1 is when our inputs here, A and B, are mixed. So I think if we throw an XOR gate in here, right, and we wire um, from you, uh, giving me a red dot there. No, I don't. I don't like the way this uh, this hooks up. Let me uh, let me fix this up real quick. Uh, let's just take it from here, and go down and around. There we go. Bring it up to here, and then we take from this guy over to. No, don't do that over to that. Now if, either, if these are mixed inputs this should go high 
and if they're both one, then this should go high. And if they're both if they're both zero, then both of these should be zero. So let's try it and see if that gets it. Okay, first test passed. They're both zeros, and the outputs are both zeros. Second test, we had a mixed input, and we did get a one on the sum and a zero on the carry. Second one, we should get a one. Uh, yeah, it's just switched, so that's fine. And then the final one, both ones, we get a zero on the sum and a one on the carry, which is perfect. So we're unlocking some stuff that I don't know about and uh, continuing the full edition, but we're going to do that next episode, guys. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to do this without, like, referencing anything beyond what's in the game. So I could have gone and looked up how do you build a half adder, and frankly, I'm pretty sure the answer would have been two AND gates, but maybe I'm missing that um, understanding. Maybe I'm, I'm misremembering something. But uh, anyway, so now we're next time we're going to be doing full edition. And uh, I'm probably going to read through all this right now, but uh, I'm not going to actually attempt the circuit until next time around. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you next time around. And also be on the lookout for um, another Let's Try on a game called Shenzhen IO, uh, which is very similar to this one. But instead of being so hardware focused, it's more focused on the software. You like actually writing machine code to control uh, microprocessors, which just looks super, super fun. It actually comes with some materials like uh, a whole printed manual um, that is like data sheets, fictional data sheets on all these parts that are in the thing. Uh, there's a primer on the programming language, and there's even some story stuff in there, like letters from your headhunter and stuff like that. I think that's a nice touch. It's pretty cool, and it's a little more graphically interesting than this game, too. So we're going to give that one a try real shortly, and hopefully if you guys have enjoyed this, you will find that interesting as well. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks very much for joining me, and have a good day.